Hi everyone, Greg Phelps here. Uh, over the last few months, I've presented a number of videos showcasing quite a number of best practices for report development for each of the four pillars of Power BI. Uh, for your reference, there are links in the description down below to the earlier videos in this series. Uh, I wanted to take this opportunity to present my personal top 10 list, uh, but this will be a little different from a traditional top 10 in that rather than a ranked top 10, I've chosen 10 of my favorites. There are so many components to a great Power BI report, and it was really hard to pick only 10. Uh, but before I get to the top 10, uh, there are three optional settings that are, in my opinion, essential to any Power BI report. Let's just flip over to Power BI here. Um, first is disable auto date time. Uh, this can be done either each time for the current file or globally for all new files. Uh, globally is recommended. Uh, disable auto detect relationships. Uh, this option cannot be set globally, unfortunately, so it needs to be adjusted for each file. Uh, enable cross filtering. Uh, this as well cannot be set globally, but it is more audience dependent and should be adjusted on a report by report basis, depending on how the report consumers wish to view their data. Uh, but my preference is for cross filtering all the time. Once those three options have been set, uh, my number one favorite is using a dedicated dates table and marking it as such. Uh, this is literally the first thing I ensure whenever I'm developing or looking at a Power BI report, and I cannot recommend it highly enough. Uh, your dates table should have full years and one row per day, and I find year, quarter, month, week, and day offsets extremely useful and rarely develop without them. Uh, after that, my remaining nine favorites in no particular order are uh, staging and referencing data uh, for multiple reasons. Uh, loading or staging your data as an untransformed table will maximize loading performance and minimize the stress on your data source. Uh, creating or referencing your fact and dimension tables as desired from your staged data uh, will minimize or obviate missing relationships and as a bonus, uh, this ensures you, you'll need to create and edit the relationships between the tables yourself, uh, which can only improve your mental picture of the data model. Well, let's just have a quick look here. Um, if I go into Power Query, uh, we'll see that I have the um, flat table imported as a staging query. And if I right click on it, we'll see that I have enable load disabled. Um, let's just create a reference of this for another table. So I'll right click on it, create reference, rename it directions. And I will come over uh, to the directions column, select only it, right click, uh, remove other columns, uh, right click, uh, remove duplicates. And then I will sort the column and uh, finally, I'll move my directions table into my data model table. So there you go. Uh, uh, the next um, best practice is reducing data volume. Uh, you can filter your data ideally at the source to avoid even loading rows or columns of data that are not necessary to answer the specific questions that are the purpose of your report. Uh, if you can't adjust the source, then you can use the row filter drop downs to remove unnecessary rows and the choose columns button in Power Query to remove unnecessary columns from your data model. Uh, star schema. Uh, one should uh, always strive for the simplest possible data model uh, with dimension or lookup tables above or surrounding the fact table. Uh, the importance of this waterfall or star layout cannot be overstressed as it only improves uh, your mental picture of the data model, and it often uh, permits the best possible DAX and visual performance. Uh, as far as relationships go, uh, strive to make all relationships one to many uh, with the one end at the dimension and the many end at the fact table, uh, and avoid bidirectional relationships if you can, unless you've determined that your model really needs them and that you really understand their use. Uh, as well, remember, that you can only have one active relationship between any two tables, but you can have many uh, inactive relationships. Uh, with respect to uh, ver verbose variable naming, uh, I've always tried to code for clarity, and I find that using verbose variable names 
really helps my code to be clear. Uh, as a couple of bonuses, when I do use verbose variable names, uh, I rarely need to add explanatory comments, and it greatly reduces simple errors in my code where I inadvertently choose the wrong variable. Uh, I also use the underscore prefix on my variable names, uh, as in my opinion, it both increases readability and it improves the type of headless provided by IntelliSense. Uh, switch true. Uh, as I've said before, I strive to code for clarity, and I find that one of the best ways to do this is to avoid the use of nested if statements. Uh, let's just see an example here using a nested if statement. Um, I much prefer to use the switch true logic instead, uh, especially with the liberal use of variables above it, so that the switch statement and return result construct are even clearer. Uh, here we see the same code exactly. Um, using switch true logic and return result construct, I do find this much easier to read. Uh, measure branching. Uh, one of the best ways uh, to develop incrementally or modularly is to build up complex calculations from simple component parts, and I subscribe wholeheartedly to Sam's technique of measure branching. Uh, I'm repeating myself uh, as well, but I find that measure branching is also one of the best techniques for writing clear code. Um, as a bonus, it makes it far easier to debug complex calculations as the individual components can be easily added to a validation table on our work page. Uh, let's just have a quick look here. So I want to pull the uh, base measure here, if you will. Um, total shipments is a simple count rows. And then I can branch off that using the standard service level uh, shipments, which is a simple calculate uh, using that uh, base measure uh, as well. I can use it again in another uh, measure here. Uh, format general. Uh, I'm a big believer in consistency, and I often find that report consumers comment first on small differences in size, alignment, or spacing rather than data, uh, so I try to obviate inconsistency. Uh, one of the best ways, in my opinion, is to use the general section of the format pane to set specific pixel values for x, y width height uh, to multiples of 10. Uh, the canvas is large enough that your visuals are probably already close to multiples of 10 anyway, uh, and this ensures consistency, and to boot, I think it looks better. Uh, let's just have a quick look here. So we see the C shipments card. Uh, if I expand the visualizations pane to the format pane and open the general uh, section, we'll see that the x, y with height are set to multiples of 10. If I look at the air shipments card right now beside it, um, things are a little bit different. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'll just quickly tab through them. And that should have been 250, sorry. And there you can see that they're much, actually we'll make this one the same. So there the alignment is set. Uh, table first development. Uh, one of the often overlooked truths about many visuals in Power BI is that they are really just tables rendered in a different way. Uh, as Sam has mentioned many times in his videos, one of the best ways to ensure a visual presents the data you want is to create a table first that displays the table correctly, then create a copy of that table and change the visual type of the copy to the desired type, uh, say a bar chart or an area chart. And let's just do that. I'll just delete this copy here. So here we have the table uh, that we're interested in looking at visually. I'm going to copy the table. I'm going to paste it. I'll move it to a new location, increase its size, and I'll pick it a different uh, visual type. In this case, stack, standard, or sorry, stack bar chart. And as a further differentiation. I'll come on, come in here and change the title. There we go. Uh, so that's it for my 10 favorite best practices in Power BI, uh, plus my three favorite options. Uh, thanks for watching, and I wish everyone the best on their Power BI journey. Bye. Hey, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the content covered in this particular 
tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website. Plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best. Take care.